Okay, this lesson concerns my first step in approaching the fallible soteriological construct called Lutheranism. We've spent just, I guess, months, if not years now, fixated with the Calvin versus Arminian, Arminian and in that, I've mentioned often Calvinism, Arminianism, Lutheranism, and Molinism. Now, if, if you haven't ever evaluated it, you can go through it and with me, and I'll start here. My first step was I literally downloaded a book called The Way of Salvation in the Lutheran Church by G.H. George Henry, is what that stands for, uh, Gerberding, Gerberding. And I'm certain I'll learn how to pronounce that correctly when I then begin to review it through video presentation. So this is the first step. So I like to do it in a formal manner and document the sources and then let let someone speak for themselves rather than, you know, I've had people tell me what Lutherans believe and I've had people tell me what Lutherans don't believe. And when I meet a Lutheran, they don't say anything that the others had said about either so and that's true I, I remind you all as you study languages the Koine text you'll start noticing and just hearing more loudly just how well how infrequent if ever you'll hear one person say the same thing twice or two people say the same thing once and that's just true that's how it is so unless you're really someone that studies the text it's for example, there's a YouTube channel called Fighting for the Faith, Chris Roseboro or Roseboro. I it's spelled one way, I think he pronounced another, but that's really not what I'm studying. But he uses Bible language. He really has a target on charismania, charismatic movement, much it's in its latter developments. It's gone global. They've even come out with a new criteria for prophets. And he's even begun to critique that. And he does just, I mean, he's just like, he chisels through it. He's a precisionist. He's meticulous. He's methodical, I should say. So when I learned that he identified himself in his own lecture once as being a Lutheran, and he doesn't hide it, except I just never really attended or paid attention to it. So I went on one of the logs, the links, that is, where you can log in and a link to another website. And it was to a Lutheran church and I went under the tab where it says what we believe. And so that's where I started. And he'll be the one I uh, basically, he's like a, a James White is to Calvinism. He is to Lutheranism. Now, I don't know why he would bother being a Lutheran because someone could be a Lutheran and not be able to handle the text like uh, Chris Roseboro, but you couldn't be able to handle the text and they not be able to handle the text. So you find someone that can handle the text, that can read it, study it, and go through it. It makes me ask, well, why would I bother being, use the Bible to support Calvinism, Arminianism, Lutheranism, or Molinism? I, I have no idea why I would aspire to acquiring the aptitude, the skill set, and becoming a practitioner in biblical hermeneutics, the science of interpretation, and then subordinate that work and the in infallible scriptures to supporting fallible constructs and theistic traditions. But that's something he and uh, James White can answer why he's tethered to Calvinism. And I'll be curious as to why Chris Roseboro is tethered to Lutheranism. But it says here in the way of salvation in the Lutheran church, the position of our church is held by all our great theologians is tersely and clearly expressed in the words not the absence, but the contempt of the sacrament condemns. So uh, they're not saying that people without sacraments are condemned because of the absence, but if they have a contempt, that brings condemnation. That's on page 19. So I, I just thought that was striking. But anyway, it goes on and they make a lot to say about uh, uh, the plainest searcher. Now, I had set mine up in sections. So I'll have notes for myself to go to page two, section three. So that's how I do it. And when you begin to evaluate, and then in this class, 
again, I'll include this book and the reference. This one's free online, so you can get that, upload the free ebook. But so on page two, I have a section one, the plainest searcher of the scriptures can save himself from great confusion, perplexity, and doubt. Well, uh, we actually uh, consider that what occurs in our assembly in the church there as we study together collaborative reasoning, collective learning, all under the headship of Christ. We come in and recognize the authority of the scriptures and we study from that approach. So uh, I, I know that it'd be difficult for me to suppose myself to be able to, as an individual, uh, do something apart from that covenant community. So it goes on, it says, one of the first and most important principle insisted on by our theologians and the framers of our confession is that a passage of scripture is always to be taken in its natural, plain, and literal sense unless there is something in the text itself or in the context. And Chris Roseboro always says, context, context, context. And then he says a passage here, and this author here, George Henry, says, a passage is never to be torn from its connection, but is to be studied in connection with what goes before and follows after. Now, that's an orthodox statement, but we sometimes we don't always follow our our orthopraxy needs to is always a gap somewhere in, in our orthodoxy and orthopraxy and in as a trained evaluator when we evaluate we want to identify quantify the knowledge gap or the performance gap and then begin to bridge that and improve the performance thus the title or the name of the uh, degree that i had sought Master of Science in Human Performance Improvement Technology. So we learn how to uh, do interventions. Is it a training, a retraining? Is it an aptitude issue? Is it uh, a user problem? So uh, we look at the, what are the tools called for? What's the approaches we should take? And we develop a learning organization. But when we evaluate, that's where we have to start looking at what are the performance standards in the aggregate and look at what is the average among those who are above the average performer and then see exactly what is, are those aptitude and could we transfer those skill sets to others. So in this case, as I begin to evaluate, I uh, just wanted to say that it says here, uh, they referred to the commission given to the apostles in Matthew 28, 19. We've seen that in our commission, our Lord makes baptism one of the means through which the Holy Spirit operates in making men his disciples. Now, before I go any further, I, I wrote up here three things he cannot do. And one will be um, find water in the in, in many of the text. Uh, two, uh, yeah, there we go. And then... Um, or baptism here, or baptize in other text. And I'll look for the examples. And then to the uh, H2O as baptizo, that form immerse. Uh, he won't be able to find consistency even in his own Lutheranism. This is a, a, a disputed thing. I think the word sprinkles actually from the Greek word. Um, it, well, it's transliterated to our word rain. It's from our word rain, which that's interesting. And then three, of course, let's just go there. Uh, he cannot uh, find any justification for sozo being equal to ganao. And he won't find text. Oh my goodness. He won't find a text in which that's the case. So now that's not because he lacks skill set. It's just it's not there. Uh, it was someone from what's called a Church of Christ tradition. They're about 130, 100, well, maybe 150 years old now. That's very new kid on the block. And he was trying to debate me and I just told him, I can't pretend that it's possible you might find in the text what you're affirming and you 
won't find it possible to actually do it. So uh, he was, we go through these elaborate, lengthy conversations and uh, trying to insist on something that just wasn't there. So uh, when we go to Mark 16, 16, he says, this man does, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. In John 3, 5, he says, except a man, anyone be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now you notice how he juxtaposed that. He went to John 3, 5, where it says, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And he then juxtaposed that with Mark uh, 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And we just read, we can cross-reference page two now, section three, which says a passage is never to be torn from its connection. So what is born of water and the spirit connected to in that conversation? So there's an example where in John 3, 5, yeah, John 3, 5, uh, there's water mentioned, but there's no baptism. So baptize, uh, baptize, I'll just use a transliteral term, is not in John 3, 5. And that's in this text. Now I'm talking about someone that we know can handle the scriptures. Can He has an elaborate software. He can scroll through the Greek, the Hebrew. He can highlight on the English and it will actually highlight the correlating uh, Greek word so that he won't miss correlate or look at this English and not locate properly the Greek word that corresponds to it. Uh, he can go through it. Uh, I call him like um, he has uh, subject matter expertise and specialized knowledge that's unsurpassed in navigating through the scriptures, but he won't find baptize in John 3, 5. So the computer won't help. It won't make that happen. So as we go on now, we're looking at how do we evaluate it? And I am starting, this is step one in evaluating the fallible construct, let's just say Lutheranism, okay? So in Acts 2.38, the apostle says, repent and be baptized every one of you for the remission of sins. Now you do know, and he can look this up or someone like him can, and then we'll go over it as uh, this will develop and become large. And then I'll publish the book, Lutheranism and Evaluation, or an Evaluation of Lutheranism and Introduction. And then I'll include every text, for example, that uses baptizo, which what's that? Uh, 30 minutes of work and then identify the ones that actually painfully, as John said, I baptize you with water, but the one who comes after me will baptize you with spirit and fire. The Corne text is very inflected, highly, I mean, very wordy, highly inflected. So, but in Acts 238, it says for the remission of sins. And yet in Matthew, I believe it's three, chapter 11 speak. Oh, here's the text. That's what we're looking at. Sorry. I forgot what I was doing while I was doing so well. So here it is. Uh, I myself, John said, I myself, I'll just say indeed here for emphasis on this post positive. Usually that's on the one hand. He said, am baptizing, am immersing, immersing. Uh, I like, I really like the finite verb form. Merging. This is actually a past participial form in Latin, but you don't want to be the person in the room that knows that. Apparently, uh, I, I found a lot of people push back, but I still don't know why. I, that's something I, I will never be smart enough to know what bothers people who aren't biblicists. So he says, I'm baptizing you all in, and that's water. So there's our H2O. And I'll just leave it at that. And that was very inappropriate. I shouldn't have done that. I should write, go ahead and write out water, but I should use blue. So water, there we go. And uh, he said this, this interesting phrase here. And he put, um, I think in English it says unto, unto repentance. There we go. Now, why I'm showing this, you go to Acts 2.38, it says, it, they, they translate in English for, and this gentleman uses that. He says, repent and be baptized, every one of you for, and this is remission. And here's of sins, of course, and you recognize that, how marked, that's 
testimony and witness. This is the negative particle. And you remember these were people who he was preaching to Israel and these good brethren here um, who had just shouted down Jesus as crucify him and chose Barabbas. Uh, here were people that Jesus had said from the cross, forgive them, release them, for they don't know what they're doing. So this is these negative testimonies, these, as we translate it, sins, sins. But you can notice the etymology, and that's another study we'll do, which is really good. But what you can ask yourself is how, uh, how did we go from here to there? See, that's um, uh, the, the water baptize, immerse, and the variance of forms, which, you know, they have answers for all this stuff where they sprinkle and or pour or it's kind of whatever. And I think in some of their theological, you'll feel like you're being gaslighted. I went to a blog to try to read some of the threads and there were people on there scathing, you know, accusing Lutheranism of baptismal regeneration apostasy or lose your salvation, deny the eternal security. And just and then the next person will come on and just a longer thread while just walk in a circle around, well, no, it's this, this, but this. And they say, you know, and you're like, we in the apologetics and outreach ministry of Lamar Mission Baptist Church, we just use the Corne text and start there. And then we can see how these other things were through eisegesis imported into the text. So here's a really good one here. Um, as I was saying about these two forms, that can't be repaired. And Chris Roseboro can't repair that. I mean, if it's really that important, then surely they would be as notorious as the Baptist for uh, trying to resolve that. You know, so uh, here's the issue here that I'll just put in here to this, this relative, this relative practice, I suppose. But here, how do you go from... Um, Unto two four because in Acts two thirty eight he couldn't find water there either. Now it certainly doesn't mean he can't find a plethora of uh, those who would posit inwardly or eisegetically lead into it, but he wouldn't be able to find them. Uh, also in Acts twenty two sixteen he says, "Be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord." Um, it actually says, uh, baptize yourself, merge yourself. So merge yourself. Well, that would definitely not include a, uh, an extension of baptism administered by the Lutheran church. And the title of the book was the way of salvation in the Lutheran church. So obviously this was much later, 1517, October 31st is when, Martin Luther initiated the disruption, which we say is when the Reformation had was started. But he says, uh, baptize yourself and wash yourself away from your particular sins when you call upon the name of the Lord. So that would be very odd. Uh, he can't find water there. But again, I'm not. Uh, I, again, we when we start with the language, remember we're not supporters of. We don't use the text to support Calvinism, Arminianism, Lutheranism, or Molinism. So since we're not vested in that, we are out. We're like uh, the first word in church, ek, ek, lacia, call. We're out. We severed our ties. We've accepted the invitation to come out. So we aren't obligated or invested to try to somehow make the text support this. So... He goes on and says, many of you were baptized into Christ or baptized into his death. Galatians 3, for as many of you have been baptized into Christ and put on Christ. Uh, these texts, for example, like Galatians 3.27, a great scholar named Dr. Benham Bogard wrote a book uh, enumerating 52, what he called heresies, which he meant preferences. He didn't, I don't think he called it damnable heresies, but one of them he was uh, uh, disputing what they call baptismal regeneration. And he said this text wasn't referring to water, um, and that's fine. And, of course, we have a metaphor in Ephesians 5. But, of course, this is not something I would argue with anybody about. No one can do this. No one can 
place uh, baptized in John 3, 5. That's not what Jesus was talking about. It's not in the scripture. It's not written. And if you ever watch some of Chris Roseboro's videos in Fighting for the Faith, his YouTube channel, he's very uh, frank about stating that when these people say things that are off script or not in the script, he said the Bible doesn't say that. And that's good that he's that way. I would love to see him evaluate using his aptitude, his skill set, his subject matter expertise, his specialized knowledge, and evaluate Lutheranism. Because as I've said to you all, a Calvinist arguing with an Arminian, uh, you might as well buy lunch and have a seat. But the conclusions are less often anyone learning more about the text rather than just outmaneuvering the next person in an argument. It's like they are both gaslighting the other, which is a psychological ploy to cause the other one to question doubt. And in Socratic thinking, we were trained to through systematic uh, questioning and the in instilling of doubt, uh, we would cause a person to question themselves. And then in the training of, uh, in learning organizations and as a consultant, you're trained to shake someone's schema, uh, that is their scaffolding to get them to think about it, evaluate their own beliefs. But I would love to see, let's say Dr. James White of Alpha and Omega. He is a, he's probably the most famous prolific scholar Bible scholar in the world. I'd love to see him evaluate Calvinism and produce a book, uh, Calvinism results of an evaluation or Calvinism as evaluated by Dr. James R. White. And wouldn't that be a great read for him to define, document, disclose the fallible elements within Calvinism using his knowledge, his expertise, subject matter expertise, special knowledge, just as I would love to see uh, Chris Roseborough take and his knowledge, aptitude, subject matter, expertise, special knowledge, and evaluate Lutheranism, wouldn't that be great? Because that would be a labor that he would have on him to do. Because at where I'm from, if we don't first evaluate, but of course it's the real world. And if we didn't, let's say, evaluate a process, we might send a product into the field that could bring harm to a consumer. Or if we didn't evaluate the process while it was in, underway in working uh, on the shop floor, Someone could be injured. So we always had OSHA, safety, DOT, hazmat training, MSDS sheets. We were around chemicals, raw materials, processes, noises. Uh, things could, uh, a, a chemical could be exposed and mishandled and atomized and particulates going into the air. So we were really not around soft things like these banters between Calvin, Armin, Luther, and Molina, that type of stroke, construct versus construct. Also, they quote 1 Peter 3, 21, the like figure were unto even baptism. Uh, first of all, like figure, those of you that use the language know that's antitypical. Uh, so it corresponds with the actual flood. You know, the text says Noah was saved through water, not fathered through water. That's now where we're at now. Uh, we also know in Mark 16, 16, not only is there not water there, but there's not gnao there. So uh, when we accuse people, uh, when people assert or affirm or advocate baptismal regeneration, and they use texts that are about sozo, it's like saying that when the uh, Hebrew emancipates crossed the Red Sea and were baptized into Moses, according to 1 Corinthians 10, that that's when they were born again. But that falls apart quickly because they were already Hebrews, God's children, his people. Moses said, let my people go. So they were already his people. Blood redemption, kinsman redemptive blood was already provided because they were already his people. And all that's, of course, type, of course. And so we already have them presupposed as his people. God called them his people. Moses representing God said, let my people go kinsman redemptive blood, the lamb was provided. They placed it over the doorpost. Kinsman redeemer, then they left, then they were baptized. So the flannel graph, the Old Testament like a flannel graph. It's really not that complicated. And if there's any correlative reality, as I know people who baptize with water, it's into Christ, that is the assembly, just like baptized into Moses, that congregation recognizing only Moses between them and God, as our church, Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas, only recognized Jesus Christ between us and God. 
there's only one mediator. We don't need someone else. We already have a head of our church, that church there. We're fully his body. We're not a fragment, a piece, a marginalized. As some have said, we were a lower case C church. Um, that was real disappointing for them uh, to find out. But now I'll go on and say this The on page five. He said, the language is certainly strong and plain. Any principle of interpretation by which baptismal grace, now baptismal doesn't function as an adjective to the word charis or charisomime, nor does it function as an adjective. So just as he can't find sozo equaling gnao in this grammar part, uh, this this phrase, uh, baptismal, and I'd never heard of this until yesterday when I read this, and that's good because I wanted to learn this as I went, and baptismal regeneration so i don't need to read the blogs i'll read what they say even though i don't know if i've ever i don't think i've known lutherans but i don't know any of them that ever tried to explain to me any of this and of course that's not unusual and it says that um, any principle of interpretation by which baptismal grace and regeneration can be explained out of these passages it says will overthrow every doctrine of our holy christian faith our catechism here also teaches nothing but the pure truth of the word when it asserts that baptism worketh forgiveness of sins, delivers from death and the devil, and confers everlasting life and salvation on all who believe as the word and promise of God declare. So that's that's from the book, the, oh me. I'll have this whole punch next time. The Way of Salvation in the Lutheran Church, if I can remember the name of it properly. But anyway, so that's what they said, and I call that just hyperbole to say, but it may be true that that's the hinge on which their history, their uh, soteriological, ecclesiological, whatever they've got there. But it says, our solid and impregnable Augsburg Confession also, when it, when in Article 2, it confesses that the new birth by baptism and the Holy Spirit delivers from the power and penalty of original sin. So they do assert regenerated baptism. There's no such thing in the text. Oh, this is from the book, uh, The Way of Salvation in the Lutheran Church by G.H. Gerberding. Ger Ger and again, by the time I finish evaluating this, I'll pronounce that properly and show the proper respect for authorship and scholarship. It's just why I said uh, this is something uh, Chris Roseboro can't do. And you wouldn't think, if you ever listen a lot of it, if you're just like me, I go through and uh, randomly uh, listen to someone. I get a notice on the YouTube channel. And you listen, boy, he really takes the charismatics to task, the charismania. He calls out people who aren't on script. He, He's very good with the Trinity, even citing Dr. Walter Martin, an early Baptist apologist. He's very good at pointing out works that these people advocate. He noticed a modalism. He'll call out people who advocate a modal form of deity as which contradicts the truth of the Godhead, the person of the Godhead. He calls people out uh, quite often. And now this latest thing, some... Uh, declaration of the criteria for prophets or something. We'll look at that, but we, we'll just use the language first instead of getting out there in the swamp, if you will, or as I call it, uh, we'll stay away from the gaslight and stick with the spotlight. And the spotlight will shine on the text. But really, it's real curious how you can go from unto repentance to for remission and then it's strange how you can go, John, preach the baptism of repentance. Preach the baptism of repentance, not a baptism of water there. So that's enough for the step one, first step. And these are just things that the most skilled, or to my knowledge, the uh, person that would reflect the highest level of subject matter expertise and uh, specialized knowledge would be Chris Roseboro. And these are three things he cannot, he would have to import baptize there. Um, and text where there is baptized, baptize, he'd have to import water. So that's eyes of Jesus. Uh, the 
baptizo, water baptism, and immerse, which that's a past participial form, is actually merge as a finite verb form. But even the form, there's some uh, indication out there on some of the blogs that, and what I'll look into later, but even that's not agreed upon totally immersion. And then, of course, sozo will never equal genao. And then this phrase, baptismal grace and baptismal regeneration, do not exist in the Bible. So that's enough. Have a blessed day and enjoy your studies.